was and 75 years ago. Before I start my prepared remarks, I'd like to say a personal thanks to everyone who organized and participated in this ceremony. You have done an amazing job. I had no idea what to expect, and I am blown away and personally touched, so thank you. I stand here to represent 5th Air Force in place of my commander, Lieutenant General Martinez, who deeply regrets that he could not attend. For my part, I am grateful, humbled, and honored to help mark the 75th anniversary of the crash of B-17 tail number 402072 assigned to my parent organization, 5th Air Force. The crash on June 14th took the lives of, of 40 Americans and changed the lives of their families and friends forever. Yet there is more to this story than just that day. There is a time before the tragedy that give us insight into the past and the ripples after that day that suggest why we are stronger together. Before that day, the story has American airmen traveling to the other side of the world to join the front lines in a global conflict, traveling to far off and exotic Australia, a place where some Americans wondered in the days before simple Google searches whether the inhabitants spoke English. Before that day, the story has the creation of my organization, Fifth Air Force, here in Australia, and it's partnering with the Royal Australian Air Force Command. Before that day, American airmen found themselves fighting side by side with Australians who did indeed speak English. The American airmen supported the Australian ground forces, the diggers, and vice versa. The Australian airmen defended American airmen, and vice versa. In a very real sense, the Americans and Australians walked or flew through the valleys of death together. They shared the wartime hardships and built bonds that only comrades in arms can understand. Before that day, there were other bonds growing. When Americans were given a respite from the front lines, they found themselves here in Mackay. Welcome, diverted, and healed by their Australian hosts. This was a time before long distance phone calls, Skype, or FaceTime. So being welcomed here was being home. On June 14th, the fate of 40 Americans on board 402072 was sealed. They would not return to the front. And so the ripples began. The sad news flowed back to the United States where mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters learned of their loss. But the root ripples also echoed here in Mackay. Mackay went into mourning too. The artful editorial in the Daily Mercury, penned by an author who was unable to write the specifics because of operational security, reflected on the gallant sons who had gone forth to defend their homeland, and lamented that these young men who were adopted into the homes and hearts of our people, leaving an aching void by their passing. The ripples continue after the war's last shot. The witnesses of the crash sharing remembrances of the young men and preserving artifacts. And as more generations of Americans and Australians face the shadows of death together in Korea and Vietnam, the depth of the, and reach of the ripples expanded. The stories of the crash passed from parents to children. Then came a moment when those echoes risked passing into legend and evaporating with the passing of time. But instead, the people of Mackay envisioned and then realized the monument beside me, the monument amplifying the connection with the past. And then amazingly, the ripples grew stronger and stronger. Over 26 years of participation by the people of Mackay in the annual memorial here. Each year reinforcing the story with younger generations and reinforcing the connection with their adopted sons. And this monument 
became a gathering place for the Americans and the Australians. It became a tangible manifestation of the letters and communiques from Australia to the U.S. that helped fill in the censored holes for the families of 402072, bringing information and closure. Going so far as to echo and drive the creation of a counterpart memorial in Arlington Cemetery in the United States. And during the last three days of my life, I have been swept away by the power of those echoes. My time here has forced me to see Fifth Air Force as more than just a headquarters in Japan. It has reaffirmed my sense of Fifth Air Force's connection to Australia. It has also forced me to think about these airmen and their role in the defense of Australia, and thereby recognize how this part of the world is in the very DNA of the United States Air Force. During my time with the Pantons of the 35th Fighter Squadron, the Night Flying Black Widows of the 421st, the Fabulous Fiends of the 36th, and the Headhunters of the 80th, we quoted the history and told the stories of our predecessors in the Pacific. We strove to emulate their initiative, their courage, and their perseverance. And reflecting on the shared comradeship of 5th Air Force and Royal Australian Air Force Command has deepened my reverence for the Australian mem military members with whom I have served. At every grave challenge around this globe, I have found them standing side by side with us. But even more than that, I stand here amazed at the multiple generations in front of me who have not forgotten their adopted American sons. I am humbled at how you were there before, during, and ever after June 14, 1943. And I know at my very core that we will be standing together in front of all future challenges.